Topaz Labs are at it again. There's a new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 1.0.10. Plus, today I want to take a look at face recovery in Photo AI. Let's see how good it really is. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. Now, there's a new update for Photo AI. This is version 1.0.10. You won't see any new features in this update. It's all about bug fixes. Topaz are now in their Black Friday sale. And according to the release notes, they don't want to really bring out anything real new right now. They're waiting till after the Black Friday sale. So we're going to have to wait for some major changes here in Photo AI. But for now, we can be satisfied with some bug fixes and things of that nature. I will link this uh release page the product release page in the description below this video in case you want to get a look at it and don't forget to report bugs and issues to topaz because they listen to us and all the feedback we can give them it's just going to make this a better product for all of us and by the way in case you haven't heard there's a big black friday sale going on right now for Topaz Labs products. They claim this is their biggest Black Friday sale ever. Just click on my affiliate link in the description right below this video. It'll take you right to this page where you could see all the great savings that you can get on all the Topaz products. Plus, if you go down to the bottom where it says Shop Now, this will take you to their biggest Black Friday sale ever where you can get the everything bundle, everything Topaz makes for $279. That's a really good savings. It's a $757.97 savings. So that's big. And that everything bundle includes Topaz Video AI at the best price of the year. So that's a big savings. And don't forget, you need to log into your account so Topaz can calculate what your savings will be. Like if you don't own all the products, they'll figure out what you need to complete a bundle or whatever. And you don't have to get the everything bundle. You can just get this bundle here where you enhance your images, where you get Denoise, Sharpen, and Gigapixel AI. But you know how that all works. So it's a really good saving, so you want to take advantage. Hey, when you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission. And when you do that, you're helping to support my channel, The Joy of Editing with Dave Gully. And for that, I thank you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, face recovery in Topaz Photo AI. I have four images of faces to show you. I'm going to use the new batch processing drag and drop feature. So I'm just going to open up my file browser and go to downloads. And I have some stock images here. I'm going to grab these images and drag them out onto the desktop here. And there you can see all of my images are loaded up that I could batch process out. But these are all faces so we could get a look at face recovery. I downloaded very small files just to show you some upsizing as well as the face recovery. And as you can see, this image right here is only 640 pixels by 960 pixels. So it's really small. And as you can see, it's been upsized four times. And now it's 2560 by 3840 pixels. So it's a 4x increase in size. Now, when I drug these in here to batch process, Topaz automatically upsized these images to four times. And the reason that is, is because if I come up here to preferences and click on autopilot configuration, you're going to notice something here under upscaling. Now they added this uh, configure autopilot about maybe about four updates ago. And I really like this configure autopilot because you could do a lot of different things and set photo AI up the way you like it. Like if you don't want to have face detection turned on by default, you can shut it off. I have mine right now turned on by default. Under auto upscaling, I have mine set to enhance small images. By default, Autopilot will upscale small images from 1.5x to 4x to a maximum of 12 megapixels with enhanced resolution. What else is nice here is you can also set an actual output size that you want. Maybe you don't want it to go up 4x. Maybe you only want it to go up 2x. So you could set that up there or you could choose none like you don't want it to upscale. So it's really a good feature, but that's why mine are upscaled, just in case you were wondering. I'm zoomed into 100% and also I have the side-by-side -side view on here. So the image on the left 
is the original image not upscaled. The image on the right is the upscaled image with recover faces turned on. And if I shut off recovered faces, you can see what it looks like without it. And now let me turn it on and we'll see the difference. And I do like the difference. But you'll notice that we have a strength slider, which is very important with uh, Recover Faces. Recover Faces does default at 100%, but I find sometimes that's way too much, so you can ease this back. So if I come back, I'm going to click right here and give it a second to update. And yeah, I think that looks a little bit more natural. So don't forget, you have this slider here. You don't have to take it at 100%. If you feel it's overdone, you could pull it back. Let's pull it back even more and see what kind of result we get. And that's not bad either. Maybe I'll just come up just a little bit more right there. So again, the left is the original before upscaling and recovered faces. The image on the right is with the upscaling and the recovered faces. So that's one image. But now we're going to take a look at, well, actually I have three more that we can look at. I'll click on the second image and give it a second to go ahead and scan the image and update it. Let me go ahead and zoom in to 100% so we can really get up close and personal here. Now this image started out at 640 by 960 pixels and now four times upsizing, it's 2560 by 3840. Now if I compare the image on the left, the original, to the image on the right, the image on the left, uh, the beard looks a little scruffier. So I think it's overdone the face a little bit too much. But again, we can click Recover Faces and open this up. And let's just ease off on the strength here and see if we can bring more of that beard back. And yeah, that's looking much better. Let me even bring a little bit more back by dragging it more to the left. So don't forget about this strength slider. You really need to work with this to hone this in to get it just the way you want. Now that beard looks really good. The eyes are looking good. The hair looks good. You know, compare the image on the left to the image on the right. I think that is a really good improvement. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. I think it's done a great job. And something also important to note, whenever Photo AI upsizes an image, it automatically turns on enhanced resolution, which really helps the image, especially on a very low res image like this. So if I open this up, you can see it is chosen low resolution because it is a low res image and that really helps. Now you cannot shut this off. You know, if I click on here, it will not shut off because enhanced resolution automatically is on for upsized images. So that's important to note. Let's move on to the next image. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. This image is interesting because we have two girls wearing glasses. Let's see how Recover Faces deals with this. And it's upsized four times. It's a very small image, 640 by 425 pixels, upsized to 2560 by 1700. So it's a nice upsizing. Let's go ahead and zoom in to, this time, let's go into 200% so we can really get a look and see what kind of results we're getting here. At 200%, we really notice the image on the left. You can see the pixelation here because it's a very low res image compared to the image on the right. Now let's shut off Recover Faces, and I want you to notice the hair, how unnatural the hair is going to look with Recover Faces turned off, so let me shut it off. See how this hair just does not look right. It looks kind of plastic here. But now when I turn it on, it looks a whole lot better. So on this particular image, on this super low res image, I think the default setting of 100 is doing a great job, so I'm not going to change it. I'll leave it just the way it is. I do have to say I'm pretty impressed with the Recover Faces. I think it's doing a brilliant job. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. And finally, let's move on to the last image. Give it a second or two to scan the image. Okay, so the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is the upsized and face recovery turned on. Now I'm zoomed into 100%, which I think is good. And let's compare the image on the left. Look at the lips, look at the face, everything here. Looks like we're losing maybe a bit of the freckles here. So let me go ahead and click on recover faces and let's pull back on the strength a bit. See if I can bring some of those freckles back. Maybe a little bit more right here. Give it a second to update. 
Yeah, so now I'll compare the image on the right to the image on the left. Yeah, and I think that looks good. And I think the skin looks really correct. I like the way the lips look. The eyes look great. The uh, eyelashes, the eyebrows, the hair, everything is good. Now let me shut Recover Faces off so you can see what it would look like without Recover Faces. Here it is without Recover Faces. Everything looks over sharpened. The eyes don't look right. The hair's definitely over sharpened. But now let me turn it on and let's look at the difference. Wow, that's pretty amazing. I think it's done a brilliant job here. But don't forget, this strength slider is very important. You're going to have to play with it. I find you really do, just to hone this in to get it looking just right. Well, there it is, the new update, version 1.0.10. If you don't have it, go ahead and get this new update. And now we got a good look at face recovery, and I think it's doing a great job. Hey, if you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!